modern day luxury cars are known for four key things. Comfort, style, performance, and as well, unfortunately, depreciation. That's right, most luxury cars, when you buy them new, after a third year, you're gonna see major depreciation. After five years, it's pretty much worthless. Guess what, I'm gonna share a list of 10 luxury cars that lead the depreciation game so they may not represent a great vehicle to buy new. However, I'm also gonna share the fact with you that I bought two of these amazing luxury cars because they represented such an amazing value, so much car for the money, and all I did was buy a CPO warranty and I got myself a phenomenal buy. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. And what we're looking at here is a modern day Mercedes-Benz S-Class. It's the S-Class. They're great vehicles, they're wonderful, chock full of technology, but it's always been the S-Class that have struggled with depreciation. Why is that? Well, what we're looking at is an older one here, but a lot of the Mercedes throughout the different generations have suffered with rust issues, other body integrity problems with trim that comes off and fragile body parts, chrome that might peel. Of course, we do have rust that sometimes sets in on areas like this trunk lid, electrics that sometimes fail. And while the engine under the hood is usually quite reliable, it's often some of the problems inside these vehicles that are leading up to the reason why people get scared to own these vehicles outside of warranty. And it's their largest, most impactful luxury sedan. And it's great, but there's other problems. Pedestrian avoidance warning systems, seatbelt problems, body integrity, plastics that come apart. Sometimes there's problems with some of the lighting on the newer vehicles. And the problem is as well, on the suspension systems. A lot of these run the air ride suspension and a lot of them will tend to fail. Airbags, compressor pumps, relays, and other electrics to keep that going. Definitely comes with its share of issues. And of course, maintenance is huge bucks. Now, a lot of these modern day vehicles come with prepaid maintenance packages, but that's only good usually for a couple of years and then you're stuck paying the whole gambit. That's why at three years, these tend to fall off. And at five years, they pretty much disappear into oblivion. As a result of all of this, in three short years, an S-Class Mercedes only holds about 75.5% of its original value. So the second car on the list is one that is so great in terms of value on the used car market, I couldn't resist. This in fact is similar to the one that I just bought recently. And what we're looking at here is, well, quite clearly it's probably another Mercedes. Three point is star, it's a gorgeous car. You've got the chrome handles on there, beautiful fold away mirrors. This one's a twin turbo formatic. You'll notice that means it's all wheel drive, great for snow and ice. Of course, down here we have this beautiful little rocker panel, gorgeous. Circle around, we have this wonderful deck lip right here, and this is a C43 AMG version. One set of beautiful exhaust tips, wonderful splitter, and another set of tips to boot. Look at this great little vent right here. Absolutely gorgeous car all the way around. Go down the side, what a beautiful sight lines on this vehicle all the way down. Gorgeous headlights, some of the nicest in the business. And while the C-Class isn't perfect, this is a C43. I personally bought the C300, which is a two liter turbo that makes around 240, 250 ponies. Mine also has a nine speed automatic. It's just a fun, wonderful car. The beauty is in terms of Mercedes, you don't have air ride on these vehicles. You don't have a lot of the extra amenities. You do have the basics, but you still have that feeling that you're driving in a luxury car. That's why I couldn't resist because these vehicles hold as little as 75% of their original value in that first three years. Meaning that if you wanna keep one of these for a while, well, just throw some CPO warranty, find yourself a nice used version like this, like I did, and make sure it's got decent miles, no accident history, and get yourself a certified pre-owned warranty and you're good to go. And that's literally what I did. It represents a massive amount of car and technology in a small amount of money. And the third vehicle on our list is this little hot rod. What we're looking at is the Bavarian Money Waster and we're talking about a BMW. This was their flagship SUV until the X7 came along and there was a lot to like about these. You could get a third row as an option for some of these vehicles. They had all of the luxury amenities from glass roofs on top. Beautiful, the latest LED headlights that they had. The wonderful kidney grills that you'd find on these vehicles were consistent through all of their different generations. And of course, down the side, you had these beautiful sight lines. The interior had all of the amenities you could possibly dream for with some of the leather touches. And as you look with a lot of these X5s, you'll notice a lot of them like this one sitting on its rump. Why? Because a lot of them had the air ride suspension. And that was unfortunately a precursor to a lot of the failures with some of these X5s. They were very, very expensive to repair. Now what we're looking at here is a 35i and it's an X-Drive. So that means 
This has the N55 single turbo twin scroll six cylinder engine tucked under the hood. And the reality is you can get a lot of different engines throughout the years. There was a 4.8, there was a 50i. Of course, you can step into the latest and greatest with the wonderful twin turbo 4.4 liter V8 called the N63. You can also get the latest B58, which is a great engine. But the reality is a lot of these get very, very expensive once they start packing on some miles. And the reputation definitely precedes a lot of these X5s because they had all the technology. So while they're amazing to drive and they're even better to own in that first three years, once the warranty expires, that's when you see the values drop off drastically with these particular vehicles. And as a result, 74.3% value retained after three years, but once you hit five years, look out the bottom falls out. The fourth worst depreciating luxury vehicle is what we're looking at here. We have a Mercedes-Benz and it actually hits 73.4% re value retention in three years because this is a Mercedes GLE. But let's take a quick look and I'll explain some of the nuances and challenges that you may have if you consider buying one of these. Beautiful grill, I love that. High gloss right there, big vents on the front, powerful front splitter on there, great little ventilation there, and some massive wheels unique for this car. Of course, down there you have these nice pronounced rocker panels and more color matched moldings right here. Gorgeous tail lights, absolutely love these LEDs. And we're talking about the GLE 350 and it's 4MATIC, so yes, it has all wheel drive, clomping at, clomping at the asphalt there to get you better traction. More great vents here, exhaust tips, and we'll talk about that in a second. And of course we have a wonderful little tow hitch so you can haul some junk to the dumpster. Of course you have more capability to haul, more bed bug infested mattresses to the dump, these beautiful overhead roof racks right there. And of course you have a wonderful set of glass panel on top to give you lots of illumination inside that great little cabin. Wonderful high gloss piano finishing on this mirrors and the interior is literally some of the nicest in the business. So what kind of issues are you gonna expect with one of these vehicles? Well, exhaust drone, they had issues in 16, 17 model years and that usually was rectified with an updated muffler on there. Of course, there was jerky transmissions on big downshifts. Sometimes a lot of customers noticed a lot of aggressive downshifts. Also batteries or draw, heavy draw. And many customers also talked about the windshield wipers sort of stuttering and, and not doing a nice clean job. The headlights were noticed as well being particularly dim and not really up to the task. Any Mercedes E-Class style represents a great mix blend of economy as well as luxury. GLE may represent good value for you if you're looking for a great buy-in. Just make sure you get that CPO warranty. What we're looking at right here, we're talking about a Range Rover period. But look what's going on here and look what's going on with this one. Look at this, you have about eight inches in there and on this one, you have nothing. Why is that? What's going on here? Well, these vehicles are notorious for failures, expensive repairs, high maintenance dollars, and that's why these vehicles suffer such brutal depreciation. Now, I truly do believe that some of that gets blown out of proportion in terms of their reliability. I believe that there are some reliability challenges, but the fact of the matter is they're huge maintenance costs. And 72.24% is all that remains after three short years with a Range Rover. That's right, it's up there, one of the top pops. But let's take a quick look and understand why people are buying these, knowing they're going to lose 25% of their value or their life savings in three short years. Let's take a look. I mean, they had these great wheels like that by Land Rover. Of course, here you've got great vents, cool fold-away mirrors, and look at that, rugged, robust. Of course, little great panels along the bottom. Mass amounts of utilitarian space back there to haul around a large family. The interior is very well bolted together. Certainly feels very rich inside, and it's very luxurious because of the air suspension. But see, that's the problem. It's that air suspension. That's one of the common problems. Why do you think that one's sitting on its rump and the other one's jacked right up? Because the air suspension is one of the key issues. Other problems, certain engines and certain generations had timing chains piling up. Other ones have oil consumption. Other ones have fuel injectors leaking down. Others have carbon spewing out of the exhaust, front differential, and overall noise. The electric handbrake on later models are also a problem because they tend to bind up, seize, squeak, or just cause all kinds of problems. Now the electrics are also an issue with a lot of these, and that's where things are really ugly. If you have to spend 200, $220 per hour shop rate to have some mechanic go through that and rip it apart just to find some loose wire somewhere, 
that gets very expensive very quickly. And that's why they tend to hurt. So if you really want to have one of these, take your licks, lose your money on that depreciation, move on with the world. Try out something new after that. The sixth is what we're parked right behind us here. And these are ultra reliable. So it's really hard to believe that they wouldn't necessarily sell well on the secondhand market, but there are specific nuances with this specific model. Now, what we're looking at here is a Lexus right there. Absolutely gorgeous vehicle, you know, lots of amenities, beautiful fold away mirrors. I love this little chrome bit there. Circle around, of course, great headlights on these Lexus. Now you've got the big mouth grill, not everybody loves, but there it is and it's all its glory. Beautiful little fake vents. And of course, all kinds of nice detail along the way there. The interior is nicer than most other vehicles on the market as well. And it's clearly almost up there with the Audis of the world. Love that overhang here. It looks very sharp and sporty. Of course, here you've got plastic to protect from the rocks coming off the road. Beautiful little exhaust tips on both sides just to finish it off very nicely. And of course, we have this LED tail lights. Very, very sharp on this Lexus. Nice little chrome bits all the way along. And I just love the overall look of this vehicle. Look at that flow, sharp looking vehicle from the side and the back. But what we're talking about is the Lexus RX 450H. And there's a bunch of problems, but generally speaking, Lexus have lots of reliability to back them. And it's still a relatively safe bet, although there are a few problems you need to understand, which is why these vehicles only retain about 71.86% of their original value in the first three years. So yes, they lose a significant amount. However, they're still a relatively safe bet. There are a few problems though. For example, there have been some electrical issues, particularly with the infotainment system and the stereo. Of course, there's been problems with shocks and of course, air ride on some of these vehicles. And under the hood, there's even a problem with the fuel pumps. The Denso fuel pumps have been recalled. There have been issues with those. So the vehicles aren't perfect, but they are very, very good. Regardless, it might represent a phenomenal buy if you're looking for something like that. But again, remember, picking one of those 450Hs up new might represent an opportunity to question your own sanity. The next one is number seven, and there seems to be a bit of a theme here. We have the three-pointed star, and a lot of them tend to depreciate quite hard. What are we looking at here? Well, let's do a quick walk around. I'll explain some of the nuances. I love this new style grill on there with the three-pointed star. Now those headlights are a point of contention. Actually, they're particularly weak. The key fob as well is a problem area that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Or you're sitting in the vehicle and it tells you the key fob's not in sight and clearly it is. Love that stepping guard there. Great for the smaller people in your life. Of course, here you have the wonderful chrome handles, nice touches, and a massive roof rack to haul that big construction project home. Of course, great little LED tail lights here and it's a 4 so it's all-wheel drive by the three-pointed star and this is a GLS 580. Now, comparing the GLS to the GLE, you'll see it's more upright, so it's certainly more space and more cargo space there. Piano gloss black trim all the way around and an absolutely gorgeous interior. So these vehicles here actually retain about 70.99% or about 71% of its original value in the first three years which isn't all that great. But let's explain, number one, because it's a GLS, it's the S-Class based SUV, and of course it's large and in charge, and those always suffer heavy depreciation because of their initial high buy-in price. But there are some technical reasons as well here. Other than the dim headlights, or the vibration at speed, or the premature wearing out of tires on these vehicles, and a lot of that has to do with because of the sheer girth and weight of that vehicle. A lot of customers are complaining about premature tire wear. Some people also complain of a fart smell coming out of the HVAC system or the AC, and basically it's just odors in general. And also the 48 volt system that you can find on these vehicles is also problematic at times. And it usually is rectified with some reconnection of some terminals and electrics within the system. So all in all, it's not a horribly unreliable vehicle. There are a few problems. Get past that and you've got yourself a real winner. And that represents a great buy on the used car market. Sadly, the person who bought that new took it up the... Wow, this is starting to look really familiar now, isn't it? We're got another Mercedes on the top 10 list of cars that depreciate the worst and we're talking about number eight and this is essentially based on the C-Class Coupe or the C-Class sedan. Love that front grill it's very very large and in charge and it's just a very very nice looking vehicle all the way around. You've got some great wheels on there and of course rocker panels along there that take it like a champ prevents the rocks from smattering everything. Of course I love these rear tail lights again Mercedes is doing a wonderful job with their LED lights 
and it's the three-pointed star in a formatic. Of course, here, we'll notice you got one exhaust tip, although slightly fake, and of course, this beautiful splitter and another fake exhaust tip. There's nothing in there. What is that? Oh no, that's so fake. It's a Mercedes GLC 300. Very versatile, just enough space in there for all the little chitlins in the back. And the interior is dressed up quite nice too, but you'll notice it's very familiar. This is essentially is the C300 interior. Beautiful fold away mirrors, and of course you've got the wonderful two-tone handles, soft touch to get in there. But there are a few issues with some of these cars. Let's touch on a few of those, but remember, 69% of this vehicle's original value is retained in about three years, making it one of the hardest hitting vehicles of loss if you're buying it new. Body integrity issues with panels that pop off with extremely sharp bumps. We actually had a speaker pop out of the door cavity there when we hit a set of train tracks. There's a few people on the forums talking about cylinder number one on that two liter engine that's starting to pop holes in it or crack due to detonation as a result of poor fueling. Key fobs an issue as well. Premature tire wear. But overall, based on the same drivetrain as the C300, which is a vehicle we've owned, I would suggest that it's actually very well made. The vehicle is high in technology, a little low on quality and fit and finish, but it's a nice place to sit and you can get yourself a phenomenal deal. Just grab yourself some CPO warranty and you will enjoy a next three or four years of wonderful Mercedes type motoring. So this here is the ninth position for some of the vehicles with the worst holding power in terms of depreciation, but I'll explain why these are actually worth buying. And because they're so great, I in fact picked one of these up for myself. I bought it two years old. I added another three years of extended CPO warranty on it. My car had low miles, no accident history. And it was a huge win because the first owner took the beating over it. But let's take a look. What is this? Gorgeous. You've got front spoilers like that. This is a Jaguar, as you can see right here. And specifically, it's an R. And what does the R mean? It means it has a supercharged 5-liter V8 under that hood. Makes a lot of great noises out of that exhaust. It also makes 542 horsepower. And it goes like a screaming banshee. Now here, the later versions have all-wheel drive like mine. This is an earlier version. You can tell right there. With that little spoiler assembly, it's a vertical vent. Means that this is an earlier model. That means it's a rear-wheel drive only, not all-wheel drive. Beautiful oversized red calipers in there in this Jaguar. And gorgeous wheels, laser cut style. And the interior is absolutely gorgeous. We have deep bolstered sport seats and an eight-speed ZF automatic transmission, which shifts almost as quickly as a double clutch. This is a gorgeous car from top to bottom. Then on the roof, you can get some with carbon fiber, some painted roofs, and mine has a glass panel roof on top to illuminate into the cabin for all the happy riders in this vehicle. Of course, you have fold away door handles there and a massive flare that absolutely looks aggressive and mean. And because it's the R, again, as I said, you've got these gorgeous quad exhaust tips on here. If you get an S version like this, that has the centered mounted tips right there. Beautiful sloping design and absolutely amazing from every single angle. There is not a bad angle on these F-type Jaguars. Some people say there's issues with those folding mirrors and they get ice in here right there and they can bind up and you get ice and then crack crack pops in here the door seal of course you can get some rocks that fall in there and then it scratches the glass key fobs are sometimes a problem under the hood it's direct injected so you can have problems with fuel injection and carbon buildup you can also have the odd coolant leak the earlier models had a y pipe for coolant and it did tend to crack and then you'd have a leak but honestly a fairly reliable vehicle for this caliber and it's really nothing most great mechanics couldn't fix and here's the harsh reality we're right around the corner we're about to sterile down the barrels of electric vehicles solely and when you have a vehicle like this that snap crackle pops and bangs makes great sounds goes like it does this is the last of a dying breed and truly worth the buy so if you have an opportunity to pick one of these up like i did i took advantage of it i jumped on it paid the extra warranty costs and moved on great keeper the jaguar f-type and thank your lucky blessings that you can get one for as little as 68.11% of its original value. That's right. That's all it's worth in three short years. That's great for you and I looking for a slightly used great bargain type of high performance sports car, the Jaguar F-Type. So you've probably been wondering, where is BMW on this list? They've always made these sorts of lists. And typically the 7 Series is the worst for that. 
but things have changed in the last couple of years. All I can offer up is number 11 honorable mention goes to the BMW 7 Series, but we're not gonna talk about that. That's not the top 10. It's actually this one over here. It has this big 5.6 liter V8 in there. Weird Pep Boys Canadian tire looking cheese mo grill right there. Of course, big wheels. And of course we have this fold away mirror with the old school looking plastic. Interior looks big and beefy and truck like which many people like. Step boards for the little people, and of course big roof racks to haul around that roach infested couch off to the dumpster. Look at this big eyesore looking of an SUV. What in fact is this? It's an infinity with funky little headlights and just an oversized girthy looking exterior. Around the back here you have these sort of pink tail lights here and it's the QX80 great chrome look finish on there but let's face it infinity nissan have garnered a pretty significant reputation for lacking reliability this one's not all that much better i mean it has a powerful v8 people like that but there's issues electrical issues forward collision avoidance technology is a problem as well and of course there's some engine issues transmission this thing is just a beast not the worst thing it's not quite lada level but it's certainly not the greatest vehicle on the planet either and as a result you lose almost 40 percent of its value in three years that's right 61.55 percent is all you retain in three short years owning one of these qx80 infinities and with all of that said right there you're gonna love it that's my list of some of the vehicles on the luxury car segment that literally do not depreciate. Hope to see each and every one on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.